It is now time for members' statements. The member from Dufferin Calgary. Thank you, Speaker. I'm pleased to rise today to recognize May as Hepatitis Awareness Month. I'm struck by the opportunity we have here in Ontario to take leadership in developing a response that will help end this viral disease. There are approximately 110,000 Ontarians presently living with Hepatitis C, and the majority of them are unaware of this status. Unaware and, in many cases, appearing asymptomatic while they quietly incur liver damage. Liver damage can lead to fibrosis, cirrhosis, liver cancer, liver transplant, or death. However, there is a cure for hepatitis C, but this cure is kept out of reach for many through restrictive clinical criteria that demands a patient be halfway through to cirrhosis before we will allow them any treatment. Speaker, we would never let a cancer pa patient get worse before we treat them. So why is it that our health care system asks that of individuals with hepatitis C? We have an opportunity here in Ontario to treat everyone with hepatitis C. I urge the minister to show leadership and take the lead on this epidemic by providing a cure for those who need it and eliminate the archaic rules for treating individuals with hepatitis C. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements. The member from Kenora, Rainy River. Speaker, I rise today on the very important issue of Lyme disease. This disease affects hundreds of Ontarians, yet this government has been inactive in fulfilling its mandate to create a comprehensive and integrated strategy to combat Lyme disease. Residents in my riding have concerns about misdiagnosis and accessing treatment. I've heard stories of young people who have had their lives drastically changed. Young women and men, formerly very physically active, now physically and mentally overcome by the disease. Young adults who are now unable to have children because of the late diagnosis and lack of treatment of this debilitating disease here in Ontario. It is heartbreaking, Speaker. We know that Lyme disease is spreading. Canada reported 500 cases of Lyme disease in 2014, but expects 10,000 Canadians will be infected by 2020. But there is hope, Speaker. There is research that shows that individuals who have the tick removed within 24 hours have a better success or have better success of not contracting the disease and that treatment in the first 30 days gives them better chances of recovery. But now is the time to take action. Ontarians need timely access to accurate testing and effective treatment and for this treatment to be covered by OHIP. Nearly 18 months have passed in this House since my colleague passed his motion, my colleague from Algoma, Manitoulin, which called upon this government to develop an integrated strategy on Lyme disease. Ontarians are looking to this government to act now to create a strategy which includes accurate testing and timely access to fully funded treatment. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Etobicoke Centre. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, yesterday I hosted a consultation in Etobicoke Centre on the proposed Eglinton West LRT with our Minister of Transportation, Stephen Del Duca. I wanted to thank the minister for coming to the riding and the hundreds of constituents, Speaker, who attended last night and provided their thoughtful input. The Eglinton Corridor is vital to my community, as it is home to tens of thousands and a commute for tens of thousands more every day. And that's why I was not surprised to hear the input and some of the concerns that were expressed last night. I repeatedly heard concerns that an LRT would mean lost uh, left turn lanes, could impede north-south traffic, or worse than the already congested commute along Eglinton, and could increase traffic in local residential streets. I also heard concerns about safety, noise, construction, and other impact. Last night, I heard very clearly from my community what residents want. They want transit that does not impede traffic or make gridlock worse, and I certainly heard many people express the need for tunneling. Since becoming MPP for Etobicoke Centre, I've, I've followed this issue closely, and in addition to last night's meeting, I cons I've consulted with members of my community and local and residents and ratepayers organizations, as well as co-hosted a transit town hall, participated in local consultations, and met with Premier Kathleen Wynne and Minister Stephen Del Duca on a number of occasions. In all those interactions, I have advocated for our community by sharing the input that I've received, and I will continue to do so. Here, here. That said, much more remains to be done. Smart transit needs to be built with community input on the basis of a strong business case and must include a plan to address the impact on the local community. Last night was an important step in achieving that goal. So again, I want to thank the minister for joining us, and I also want to reinforce that we need a transit solution that is beneficial to commuters, to taxpayers, and to Etobicoke Centre, and I won't start working until we achieve that goal. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Great advocacy. Further member statements. The member from Leeds, Grant. Uh, thanks, Speaker. As Ontario PC critic for tourism, culture, and sport, it's an honour 
to recognize International Museum Day, which is celebrated on May 18th. I want to begin by acknowledging members of the Ontario Museum Association here today meeting with MPPs at Museums at Queen's Park Day. Speaker, Ontario's 700 museums are more than just a home for artifacts and documents. Today's museums are as focused on their integral role in building a brighter tomorrow for Ontario as they are in preserving our past. They support local economies by sustaining over 9,800 jobs and attracting 17.5 million visitors annually, many coming from around the world to discover Ontario's incredible museums. In my own riding, places like the Brockville Museum, Delta's Old Stone Mill Museum, and the Thousand Islands Boat Museum in Gananoque are true community hubs. They encourage lifelong learning by opening their doors to people of all ages and walks of life through school visits, summer camps, speaker series, and workshops. By challenging us to think critically, museums spark curiosity and a quest for knowledge that can only lead to more innovative, interesting, and vibrant communities. I want to also personally thank the over 32,000 museum volunteers in Leeds, Grenville, and across Ontario who so selflessly give their time and talents. And as we mark International Museum Day tomorrow, I urge all Ontarians to visit a museum soon to learn more about how they are enriching lives and our communities. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. For the member statements, the member from Hamilton Mountain. Uh, thank you, Speaker. On Sunday afternoon, I had the great pleasure of attending the Celebrity Softball Classic at Bernie Arbor Stadium in my riding of Hamilton Mountain. Sponsored by the Hamilton Cardinals, the Bulldogs, and the Tiger Cats, the event was held in support of Tim Horton's Children's Foundation and Hamilton Challenger Baseball. I'm a hometown fan, Mr. Speaker, and it was so great to see so many uh, special players there, including Zach Caleros, Simone Lawrence, Brandon Banks, Mike Filer, and of course our very own Pigskin Pete. Having started in Hamilton, Tim Hortons is a bit of an institution in our city, and our community appreciates the great work done by their Children's Foundation, allowing some kids who might not get the opportunity of vacation or to go to camp. I'm also a huge supporter of Hamilton Challenger Baseball, who does a fantastic job of making sure that kids with disabilities have the opportunity to play baseball in the structure that suits their abilities. Um, based at Inch Park on the Mountain, Speaker, their opening day is coming up on May 29th, and I'm so looking forward to being there and seeing the smiles returning on so many faces. I encourage all members of the House to join us that, that day. I, um, I also wanted to uh, mention, Speaker, that regardless whether there was hail, snow, rain, or storm on, on Saturday afternoon, Sunday afternoon, it didn't stop anybody from filling the stadium at, uh, in Hamilton, and it was a, it was a great day. So thank Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Further you. member statements, the member for Ajax Pickering. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm pleased to stand today in the House to recognize the 46th annual Ajax Home Week, commencing Sunday, June 12th to Sunday, June 19th, ending on Father's Day. We recently completed yet another National Volunteer Week, and the dedication and hard work of Ajax volunteers, young and old alike, make it a success year after year. I also had the honor to uh, commence with the Ajax Kinsman, Ajax Home Week some 46 years ago, commencing in 1971. So many groups involved, they just want to say thank you to the public who support their charitable works that give back to the community. Our major sponsoring organizations have always been the Ajax Kinsman, Legion, Lions, Optimus, and Legion Branch 322. Ajax Home Week has also changed over the years to accommodate the growth and diversity that has made Ajax a great municipality that it is. The, the week-long celebration for everyone, regardless of gender, religion, race, age, or personal means, and that is something that I wrote into our guidelines some 46 years ago. We start Ajax Home Week with a free family fun day. The entire day is on us. It's on the hard-working volunteers who make things happen. I'm looking at that clock. Is that a 16 seconds, Mr. Yeah, Speaker? 16 15. The wow. grand finale is on Father's Day, Mr. Yeah. Speaker, of all things. And, uh, the day begins with the Ajax Rotary Pancake Breakfast will serve somewhere in the range of 2,500 pancake breakfasts, and you don't need any more, Mr. Speaker. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statement, the member from Simcoe Gray. Uh, Mr. Speaker, on behalf of our leader, Patrick Brown, I rise today to pay respect to Private Kevin Mackay, a local hero from the riding of Simcoe North and the Barrie area. 
Mickey, as he was known by his friends, was born in Richmond Hill, but moved to Barrie and later, later Oral Medonte Township at a young age. He attended Eastview Secondary School, where he became a cherished friend to so many. Kevin went on to join the Princess Patricia's Canadian Light Infantry Division out of an unwavering dedication to protect his country and those less fortunate than him. Tragically, Kevin was killed by a roadside bomb in Afghanistan six years ago this week, just days before he was to return home from his tour of duty. Kevin's legacy is not that he was the 144th of 158 Canadians killed in Afghanistan, but rather the impact he had on the lives of so many others. Kevin helped children in Afghanistan to safely receive an education for the first time, while being a loving friend and son to those back home in Oral Medonte. The least we can do as parliamentarians is pay respect to those who have paid the ultimate price for our way of life and our freedom. Today, on behalf of Mr. Brown and our caucus, I say thank you to Kevin's parents, Beth and Fred, and brother Riley, for the truly great life of Private Kevin Mackay. May he never be forgotten. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, further member statements. The member from Ottawa, Orléans. Merci, Monsieur le Président. May 1st to 7 is designated as Children's Mental Health Week, which is about increasing awareness of the signs of child and youth mental health problems, decreasing stigma, and understanding that help and treatment is available and can work. On May 1st, the Orleans Bowling Centre hosted an important event, the fourth annual James Strikes Back Bowlathon. I was proud to put a team together with family and staff to bowl in support of youth mental health and in memory of James Osborne. James was an avid bowler who tragi tragically took his life at the age of 18 as a result of depression, a mental illness that affects one in every five youth in Canada. The family event was created so children, young people and adults can have conversation about youth mental health generate awareness and tackle this pressing issue while raising funds that goes towards youth mental health. It is very important to educate ourselves about this issue so that we can lend help to those who need it. And the more we talk about it, the, less we re the more we reduce stigma so that this, these youth can get the help they need when they need it most. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member from Halton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'm pleased to rise today to speak about an important event for Buddhists here and around the world. Mr. Speaker, this month there are celebrations taking place around the province to mark Vesak or Buddha Day, a commemoration of the birth, enlightenment, and death of Buddha. I would like to extend best wishes to everyone celebrating this important occasion. Vesak is a time for humility and generosity a time to make an effort to bring happiness to the less fortunate, and a time to give donations to local charities. During this time, Buddhists celebrate by meditating, singing, and eating vegetarian meals. It's a happy and deeply spiritual celebration. Mr. Speaker, the main message of Vesak is universal peace and freedom, and that's why those celebrating sometimes will release thousands of birds and animals to celebrate the giving of freedom. Over the next few weeks, festivals will be taking place across the province. I want to wish all Buddhists here and around the world a very happy Vesak. Thank you very much. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements. It's